No, that is not Jesus' word. Isaiah is not Jesus' word. You don't even know your Bible well. Isaiah cannot be the words of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He's a prophet though. But is it the word of Jesus? It's the word of God. Yes, brother. My name is David Dockery. I'm a professor at Cree University. I teach English there. I actually, I didn't know I could ask any question. I was going to, I just heard you saying now. But um, my question would be first, I, I believe in God. I'm a Christian. Um, my question would be like, there's lots of revelation. There's good spirits and bad spirits. So a good spirit can come to you and give revelation. A bad spirit can give revelation. So in the Christian tradition, we, we say that uh, if the angel or the spirit bringing the message doesn't contradict what went before, so God revealed something to Moses, if the angel bringing the message does not contradict Moses, then it's a good angel. And so in the Christian tradition, we can tell a good angel from a bad angel in that the revelation it brings, if it contradicts the Old Testament, the Torah, or the Gospel, the Injil, then it's a bad angel. And my question would be to you, sir, with respect, the Quran contradicts the Torah and it contradicts the Injil. So does that make, not make it a bad angel that appeared to Islam's prophet? The brother asked a very good question. He said that he's a Christian. And he said, according to Christianity, when an angel comes to differentiate between it's a good or a bad, if it's a good angel, he will not contradict the previous revelation. Right. Means if it's in the Injil, if it's in the Gospel, it will not contradict the Torah because Torah was a revelation given to Moses, peace be upon him. So if the Quran contradicts the Torah and the Injil, then it's bought by a bad angel, not a good spirit. And that's a very logical question. Point number one. We believe that all the revelations came from one Almighty God. And we believe that all the messengers, the basic message was the same. To believe in one God and worship Him alone. Regarding contradiction, what we believe, we believe by name, there are four revelations given in the Quran. Quran says in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 38, Quran says, in every age have we sent a revelation. My name four are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil and the Quran. Torah is the Wahi, the revelation given to Moses, peace be upon him. Zabur is the Wahi, the revelation given to David, peace be upon him. Injil is the Wahi, the revelation given to Jesus, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad So Quran confirms that Torah is the revelation of God. Given to Moses, peace be upon him. Quran confirms that Zabur is the revelation given to David, peace be upon him. Quran confirms that Injil is the Wahi, the revelation given to Jesus, peace be upon him. Now, the point to be noted is, I'm a student of comparative religion. You're a professor of English language, I believe. I have read the Bible. The Bible is not the Injil we believe in. We believe in Injil, the Wahi, which was given to Jesus, Christ, peace be upon him. But we do not believe that the present Bible is the Wahi, the Injil given to Jesus Christ. Even the Christian scholars don't believe. What the Christian scholars do, they divide the Bible into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament contains the 46 books, if it's of the Catholics. If of the Protestant, contains 39 books. The New Testament contains 27 books. Correct? Of the New Testament, the first four books are called as Gospels. Gospel of Mark, Matthew, Luke, John. Now these Gospels also, what we want, Gospel, if you translate into Arabic, becomes Injil, not Bible. Bible comes from the Greek word Biblos, meaning book of books. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's correct. Biblos. Now Gospel means Injil. In the Bible that I read, it is Gospel according to Matthew, Gospel according to Mark, Gospel according to John, Gospel according to Luke. What I want is Gospel according to Jesus Christ. Today, no Christian birth, the name, has ever got to me gospel according to Jesus, peace be upon him. The scholars did not know who wrote the gospel. So it's not gospel of Matthew, it's gospel according to Matthew. In Arabic we say, Injile Matthews, Injile Marcus, Injile Luca, Injile Johanna. What we want is Injile Isa. We believe in Prophet Jesus as the messenger of God. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ.
So if you get the original Injil, it will never contradict. What you have today, according to Christian scholars, it's a mixture of the word of God and the word of the prophets and the word of historians. I'm sorry to say even pornography is there. I challenge any Christian to read in the open public if they can read some of the text of the Bible, which is nothing but pornography. I cannot read. Even if you give me a million dollars, I cannot read some passages of the Bible in public. Why? Because it's pornography. That cannot be the word of God. The Bible says that Prophet Lut salam, Prophet Lot, he had sex incest with his daughter. How can I believe? How can I believe the Prophet of God having incest? So what I say, Quran is the Furqan. It is the criteria to judge right from wrong. Whatever matches with the Quran, I've got no objection accepting that portion of the Bible as the word of God. What is contradicting with the Quran, I said, cannot be the word of God. I cannot agree that my prophet, Prophet Lut, salam, can do zina, can do incest with his daughter. So what I believe, we don't have the original Injil. The Quran will not contradict with the Injil given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So that's the reason this is called as the Furqan. All the earlier revelations that came, brother, were meant only for those people in that time. The Bible was not meant for the whole of humanity. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5. He told all disciples, go in not in the way of the Gentiles, rather go to the house of the Lordship of Israel. Don't go to the non-Jews. Gentiles are non-Jews. Don't go to the Muslims. Don't go to the Hindus. Only go to Bani Israel, children of Israel. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. I have not been sent, but to the lost ship of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger only to the Jews. The Injil was revealed only for those people. So all the messengers that came before were sent only for those people and for that time. All the revelations that came before were sent for a particular group of people for a particular time period. That the reason Almighty God did not think it fit to preserve it. He didn't think it fit to preserve it because it was temporary. But the Quran, because it's the last and final message, given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, it was sent for the whole of humanity. It's mentioned in Surah Ibrahim chapter 14 verse number 1. In Surah Ibrahim chapter 14 verse 52. It's mentioned in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 85. And Surah Zumur chapter 31 verse number 41. That the Quran has been revealed for the whole of humanity. And Almighty God says in Surah Hijar chapter 15, Verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. So Almighty God takes it upon himself that because this is the last and final revelation, I will protect it. So that's the reason this is the Furqan, the criteria is asked to judge which portion of the other scriptures are right or wrong. So that's the reason this will never contradict with the original Injil. The present is a mixture. Uh, can, I, can I read something from the Quran? Sure. What's it's from Surah chapter 5, and it's verse uh, 68. Um, Surah chapter 5. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the Bible there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So um, in Surah chapter 5, verse um, 68, it's um, Islam's prophet Muhammad. He says to the Christians and the Jews, he says, um, let me just find this. He says, well, it's God. God speaking to Islam's prophet, right? He says, say... O people of the book, that's talking to the Christians and the Jews, S say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the law and the gospel and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. It is a revelation that cometh to thee from the Lord. This was spoken by Islam's prophet in 610, 620, between that time A.D., and it means that when Prophet Muhammad spoke this, that um, the Christian scriptures and the Jewish scriptures were available for them to stand upon. Because otherwise, why would Islam's Prophet Muhammad say to the Christians and the Jews, O oh, people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the law, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you, Zabur. It means that in the Prophet Muhammad's time, 610 AD, the Christian scriptures and the Jewish scriptures were available to the Jews and the Christians to stand fast upon. Otherwise, the, the Prophet Muhammad would not have said, go and stand fast upon those scriptures. And, 
And yeah, so we have Bibles that are extant way before 610 AD. We've got Bibles from... I'm two, aware of that. I'm yes. a student of Christianity also. And so, you asked a very good question. Right. So, I understood your question. Hmm. That the Quran says that why don't the Christians stand to the scriptures? Correct? That it, means your logic says that that means there was the Injil and the Torah at the time of Prophet Muhammad. Peace yes, be upon him. I agree to him. Yes. Now I'll give the reply to that. Right. Now, you cannot take only one verse of the Quran and say you have to read Quran as a whole. Correct? So if you pick up one verse of the Quran, brother, yes. if you can hear me. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear so you. If you read and you hear, you cannot concentrate. Okay. Okay, okay, You're okay. a professor. Okay. I'm a medical doctor. Okay. You can read and hear, but you cannot concentrate on my answer. So okay. if you want to read, you read and then I'll tell the answer. Okay, I'll concentrate. Right? Concentrate on my answer so you'll understand and you'll appreciate my answer. No, Quran is also called as the Furqan, which I told you earlier, the criteria to judge right from wrong. Further, if you read the sayings of the Prophet in Sahih Bukhari, it says that anything which is there in the Bible and the Torah, which matches with the Quran, we accept it. What is against, we reject it. What does not match and not against, may be right, may be wrong. So, that means, if I have to tell you, I pick up certain portion of a Bible which is matching with the Quran and saying, let us come to common terms. The Quran further says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, Kul, ya hilal kitab, the same hilal kitab. Kul, ya hilal kitab, say of people of the book, ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa imbayna baynakum, come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bhi shayyo, that we associate the part with him. Wala yat takhiz abad, dun abad, dun arbab in mun illa, that we erect not among ourselves lords and pitches other than Allah. Fa in tawallo, if then they turn back. Fa kulu shadu, say ibe witness, be anna muslimun, that we are Muslims, bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here the Quran says, tell to the Jews and Christians, come to common terms which is between you and me. That means the Prophet knew the book you are carrying is corrupted, but yet it contains verses of God. Nowhere does the Quran say the complete text you are carrying is the word of God. The original wahi was the word of God. But the present book that you have, because if you hear the scholars of Christianity, they say when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, walked on the earth, not a single word of the Bible was written. The earliest is 70 years after he died. And we know this. So whatever is there, if it matches with the Quran, we agree to be the word of God. So if I tell you, you believe Bible is the word of God, I believe Quran is the word of God, let us agree to follow what is coming. If we agree what is coming, what is different we'll discuss tomorrow, correct? But what is common in the Bible and the Quran, if you follow, even you will agree to the word of God, even I will agree to the word of God, right or wrong? Right. So this is what the Quran says, come to common terms. At least what is common, let us agree to follow. If you believe in 10 things, I believe in 10 things. Out of these 10 things, 5 are common and 5 are different. So let us agree that let us follow those 5 things at least. So that's what the Quran is saying. Even those things which are five are common, you are not following. So how can you call yourself a Christian? Correct? Now I want to ask you a question. Okay. Do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God. We believe that he was Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslims and the Christians are going together. But some may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is that most of the Christians, including yourself, believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. I'm telling you, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. I challenge any Christian, if any Christian can point out any unequivocal statement, any unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or he says worship me, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity now. Okay, can I, okay, can I, can I read a book? I'm verse? not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers and sisters. Okay, can I, can I read it? Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Please let me, um, just let me complete. Yes, yes, I'll give sure. you chance, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not speaking on behalf of my other brothers and sisters. I'm putting my hand on the guillotine. Please note my challenge before posing your verse. Point out a single unequivocal statement. And you are a prophet of English and English is better than mine. 
point out a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29. He said that my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 20. I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of God, is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon the Muslim, is clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. E men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God from amongst you, by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him, and you are witness to it. A man approved of God, amongst you, by wonders and signs and miracles, which God did by him, and you are witness to it. So there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or he says, worship me. And you're most welcome to point out, and if you point out, I'll accept Christianity. Okay. And if you don't, if you don't, then you'll have to accept that Jesus is not God. Do you agree with the challenge? Okay. Okay. Thank you, brother. All right, so um, we believe that, Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God, the, 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 the Trinity. Okay, okay. So, okay. So, in John chapter 10, and beginning at verse, um, can I just hold that for a second? Yeah, I guess 30, maybe 31. <laughs> so, um, John chapter number 10, verse number 30, I and my father are one. That's, that's, that's a good one, but I'm, I'm really, I'm reading from John chapter, that's good. Um, um, you have the Bible I'm reading from my head. Yes, that, that actually, thank you very much. Um, I'm helping you, brother. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I'm reading from um, John chapter 10, verse 34. Yes. And it says that Jesus, so first of all, well, verse 33, the Jews want to stone Jesus, right? Here's, here's what it says in verse 33. The Jews say, uh, okay, first 31, Jesus says, and again the Jews picked up stones to stone him. The Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus. Verse 31, and again the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? The Jews said, We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, Very clear. what about the one whom the Father set apart, as his very own, and sent into the world. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said, I am God's son. What does it mean? Tell me. She said, Jesus said, it's I am clear. God's son. You have quoted very well. It proves okay. my point very well. Okay. Do not believe me unless I do what my father does. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand that the father is in me, and I in the Father. So there, Jesus says, I am the Son of God. And the Jews, they understood from him that he's claiming to be God. Okay. So that's one text that shows to me that Jesus plainly all, claimed divinity. Point number one. This is no unequivocal statement. It's not an unambiguous statement at all. But he said, no, no. I am God's son. A God's son doesn't mean God. You know, God has got sons by the tongues in the Bible. Adam is son of God. David is son of God. Ephraim is son of God. According to Romans chapter number 8, all those are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. If you follow the commandment of God, you are a son of God. If I follow the commandment of God, I am son of God. This is idiom used. We say in but, Hindi, beta, son. Suppose if I tell, there is a young child. He comes, okay, son, come on top. It means son. That doesn't mean begotten son. It means son. So, God has got sons by the tons. Romans chapter number 8 says, verse number 14, all those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. If you are led by the Spirit of God, if you follow the commandment of God, according to the Bible, you are a son of God. If I follow the commandment of God, I am a son of God. I know very well that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. He surely should be called the son of God. Son, in the terminology of the Bible, there are many 
So do you mean David is also God? Do you mean Ephraim is also God? Do you mean your God? Do you mean I am God? But but the Jews they knew that right? But, but, and they but son of God is not God. If I say this is my son, does it make me him? No. Yeah, but from Jesus' teaching, the Jews understood his claiming divinity. Very good, very good, very good. You know, in India, when I quote the Hindu scriptures, the Hindus come and touch my feet and call me God. So the Hindus call me God. Do I become God? No. I am telling you, oh, this is wrong. It is shirk. No, you are quoting like that, like that Veda. You have to be avatar of God. They touch my feet and they call me God. Just because they call me God, can you say Zakir called God? Does it fulfill the statement? Point out a single unequivocal statement where Zakir said he's God. No, somebody else is calling me God. Similarly, here, if you read the context from Gospel of John, chapter number thirty-one onwards, they say he, Jesus Christ, asked them in verse number thirty-one, Gospel of John, that why do you stone me? They say we stone you not for your works because you blaspheme. Then Jesus Christ clarified to them he is not blaspheming. Or Jesus says, okay, I am God, stone me. He did not. He said that for which of the good works do you stone me? Then you go to verse number thirty-two. We don't stone you for good work because you blaspheme. Then he says, "Is it not said in your scriptures that if you call God to whom the word of God has come, the word of God comes to the messenger. Word of God came to Moses, so Moses becomes God. Word of God came to Jesus. He doesn't become God. Word of God came to Muhammad, peace be upon him. He doesn't become God. So to whom the word of God has come, if you say God, you have not broken the law. Cross reference." Go to Psalms chapter number eighty-second. Cross reference. There it says that you call those who are God. Verse number six. The law is not broken. So yeah, brother. So here Jesus is telling them, please be upon him, that if you call person a God to whom the word of God has been sent, the scripture is not broken because this God is with a small g. All so right. That doesn't mean he is God. All right. So Then... this verse nowhere does it say. Regarding your statement that I in you and you in me, we are one. It is one in purpose. If you go back to cross reference, cross reference, it is one in purpose. Like my father is a doctor, I am a medical doctor. I and my father are one. We are one in purpose. That doesn't mean we are one in sausage. It doesn't mean we are one as human being. Nowhere does it say. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if they thought he was God, he should say, "Yes, I am God. Stone me." Because the God cannot be heard by stoning. Correct. So, if the Jews tell him, God said, "Very good, you I taught you correctly. I am God." He says, "No. For which of the good works do you stone me?" They say, "We don't stone you for good works. We stone you because you blaspheme." Then he says, "I don't blaspheme because if to whom the word of God has come, if you call him God, that means he's trying to prove to them he is not God. He is a messenger of God. What your scripture is saying, same thing what I am saying." All right. Um, about about okay, second try. Second try, no problem. Okay. So second try. You would you? So, so first try. Okay. Prove that Jesus is the messenger of God. Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Right. When the when the Hindus when the Hindus came and kissed your feet and said you're God, well, what did you say? I said it is shirk. Right. Okay. Blaspheming. Because you're good. Because because you're a good man. You don't want to lead Jesus them astray. Jesus is better than me. Right. So Jesus they, is better than me. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number nineteen, verse number sixteen, seventeen, when a man comes and says to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, brother, brother, if you listen, hmm. when a man comes and says to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, good master, what good things should I do so that I enter eternal life? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, don't call me good. Leave aside God. Jesus Christ is better than me a million times. Million, million times. So Jesus Christ says, "Peace be upon him." Why thou callest me good? Leave aside God, with single O. Why thou callest me good? There is only one good, that is Father in heaven. And if thou want to enter eternal life, you keep the commandments. You understand? Right. So this is what Jesus Christ said. He never said you call me God. Okay. So when okay. He, next slide. Okay. So when he, when he rose from the dead, right? Okay. Um, rose he, from the dead. I mean, God died. Yeah, okay. Yes. Do you believe God can die? Yes. That's what I told you. People believe that there is no God. How can a God who can die? But but what is the difference between him and me then? But what? But wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Death, death is not the cessation of being. Death is not stopping to exist. Death is just passing from one dimension. To another dimension. That is because when, of that no, particular cessation, that period yeah, is finished. Yes, but when you That's die, that's the end of your phase in this world. That is it. Yes. So when you die, you pass from this state to another state. So yes, God, Jesus, when He died on the cross, He passed from this dimension 
to another dimension. God. God did, yes. God is. God can God pass is dimensions. No, but here, here's God the thing. God is ultimate. I told you, pull Allah ad. Say is Allah one and only. Allah who summoned the begets not, nor is the begotten. Yes. Jesus Christ was begotten? Yes. So he cannot be God. But God, but that, that word means, when we take that word begotten, sir, when it means, it's, it's, it's actually can also be translated the unique son of God. Different, different to... Very unique son. Very unique. Yes, but... Can you point out one place in the Bible which says that Jesus is begotten son? I think it's, it's John chapter 1 verse... No, um, John chapter 3 verse number 16. Yeah, there, <laughs> well, well, well it, it. It, it's also John chapter 1, right? Begotten no, son. John chapter 1 doesn't talk about... I challenge you. Okay. John chapter 1 uh, doesn't talk begotten son. John chapter 1 says that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. That's not begotten son. If you read Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. I'm, I'm wait, wait, you. wait. Yeah, I'm yeah. not completed. This brother is from the King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now if you read the Revised Standard Version, revised by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different copy nominations. They say this word begotten is interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they're throwing it out of the Bible. Okay, so okay, this sir. word begotten, which is only the ones in the Bible talking about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has been thrown out of the Bible as interpolation, as a fabrication, as a concoction coming closer to the Quran. Okay, so let me, let me go to your point where the, the, Muslim, the, the Hindus came and kissed your feet, right? And they said, you're, you're God. And you said, no, that's... That's rubbish, That's right? blasphemy, not rubbish, blasphemy. Okay, so then... Blasphemy. Okay, so then the disciple Thomas came to Jesus, right? Oh when, my God. So this is, in, this is John chapter 20 and it's verse... Um, it starts with verse 24, but the... the and tw 28 actually, but... 24, 28. Thomas said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Mm. And Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Believed what? My Lord and my God. Jesus didn't say, Thomas, that's... Rubbish, don't call me God. But Thomas says to Jesus, right? Thomas says, brother, brother. my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So there again, Jesus accepts divinity. No, doesn't say, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't read say the like, context. Read the context. You are quoting out of context. Okay, Gospel let, of John chapter number 20. You start from verse number 25. It says that I want to touch I want to touch and yes, see yes. whether the imprint of the nails are there or not. Exactly. So he said, blessed are those who believe in me without seeing. Come and touch me. Then he says, oh my God. What does it mean? For example, if I say, oh my God, it is five o'clock. You lot say, don't call me God. It's exclamation. I'm talking to God. Oh my God, it is five o'clock. So you lot say, don't no, call no, me God. No, no, Dr. Pat, no. When I say, oh my God, it is five o'clock. Will you say, brother Zakir, why are you calling me God? You know I'm not calling you God. It's exclamation. So when he touches Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and he sees the imprint of the nails, oh my God, he's not calling Jesus God, he's calling to his God. Right. This but, is the exclamation in but, plain English language. But Tom, you are a professor of English. Yes, if but, I say, oh my God, it doesn't mean I'm calling you God. But that's blasphemy. That's taking God's name in vain, right? No, not in name. When you say like that, oh my Jesus. No, that's, suppose if it, I say, oh my God, it's five o'clock, is it blasphemy? Well, yeah, because you, you've just said God's name though without... With the guy, kind of like, it, like a swear names. word. We can use God's name for good things. No, oh my God, I have to go. No, What's the problem? Well, it's that, not allowed. That's not good. I mean, uh, Thomas, Where does it say it's not good? Tell me. Well, well okay, okay. Okay, Thomas. So which verse says? Okay, the Jews, the Jews, when they come to God's name in the Bible, they won't say it, right? They'll say Hashem, the name. Or they won't say... So they believe that is the name. Jehovah, Jehovah, but, Elohim. But, but when they come to that name, the Tetragrammaton, that some scholars translate Yahweh, they're very Yahweh, they're very conscious about God's name. So when Thomas said, my Lord and my God, it's not, it's not like, oh my gee, it's late. So it is. When he touches, he comes to know. Okay, but another thing, sir. When but anyway, does yeah. it fulfill my requirement? What I challenge you, point out a single unequivocal statement. It is not unequivocal statement. Okay, let, From anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ himself says, I am God. It is other people are saying he's God. That doesn't fulfill my challenge at all. Okay. And if you don't fulfill my challenge, you'll have to believe Jesus is not God. Okay, one more point then. What was Jesus' favorite term for himself when he walked the earth? What was his favorite term? 
He was also called the son of man. Right, the son of man. Now, here, here we, I'm going to come to your point. The son of man in Jewish literature is a divine figure. If you go to no, Dan- I'm also son of man. Yeah, but look, but... Forget about Jewish scripture and divine figure. Okay, but if, if you it go... It is, you have to point out a single unequivocal statement. I call myself a son of man. Do you mean I'm calling myself to be a God? Yeah, Brother, are you son of man or not? I, are you a son of man and a woman, correct? Yes. And yes, so do you mean you're a God? Oh, you're blaspheming and ask them to stone you. Yes, yes, but when 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 Jesus was in front of the high priest and he said, I'm the son of man, they said, okay, he's spoken blasphemy. So they understood something very unique about the term son of man. And son it's fr- of man has very different meanings. I told exactly, you, unequivocal. Exactly, okay, so. A, you understand English? Unequivocal statement. Well, I w- Unambiguous statement. You are being ambiguous. Oh my God, somebody else is saying. It's unequivocal. And when Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God. I say I'm son of man. You said you're son of man. Do you mean to say you're saying you're God? All right. In, in the Old Testament, okay, God calls himself the beginning and the end, right? The beginning in Isaiah, right? The Alpha and Omega in Greek, right? And Jesus Christ in Revelations, he claims that exactly. He says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who was and is. No way. So, yes. that's, that, so that's in the, Re- the book of Revelation. Alpha and Omega means he's the beginning and he's then. He had a beginning in the stable. If he's the beginning, he was born in a stable. He's not the beginning of the world. It means in the law, at the time of Moses. For the law at that time, what Moses taught was Alpha and Omega. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him. In the law, he was Alpha and Omega. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad is Alpha and Omega as far as the law is concerned. Because they are the messengers of God. That does not mean that he is the beginning and the end. He was born in a stable. How can he be the beginning? Anyone who knows little bit knowledge about the Bible will agree that he was not the beginning. There were many people before him. He was not the beginning. But in terms of law, because he was the messenger of God, whatever he taught in terms of law of Christianity, was Alpha and Omega, I agree. At the time of Moses, he was Alpha and Omega. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is Alpha and Omega. It's a statement saying that he is the final authority. All right, all right, sir. Um, would you believe that a prophet's words and his actions, that they're both, if a prophet's got bad actions, like immoral actions, then that's, that's not a good sign, right? A prophet's actions, his, his teaching, his, his life must, must back up his words, right? So when, when Jesus, when when, Matthew, when Thomas came and said to Jesus, my Lord and my God, if Jesus wasn't God and he wanted not the people to go into error, because Jesus would know, people are going to hear no, Matthew said, my Lord I and my God, you, then, wait, wait, then, I, then Jesus would have said, Thomas, don't call me my God. What are you doing? Because Jesus would have known, simple people will see that and they'll realize, oh, Jesus didn't rebuke him for calling him my God, my Lord and my God. Jesus is a good prophet. If he wasn't God, Jesus said, Thomas, don't say that. I'm not God. What are you talking, Rabbi? You like already this? said that earlier. When the man said, good master, why callest me good? Because there's a special wait, context wait, for wait, that. Wait. I'll tell you. Hmm. Now, good, my God, he understood like you and me. When I tell you, oh my God, he said, you will not say, why are you calling me God? You told that. So do you think that Jesus is less intelligent than you? Jesus is more intelligent than you and me. Peace be upon him. So when you will not object to me, why should he object? He understood very clearly. You are misunderstanding him. When the person said, good master, you objected. Why thou callest me good? And a prophet cannot contradict you yourself said. That is very clear in the gospel of Matthew. Chapter number 19, verse number 16, 17. Why thou callest me good? There's only one good that is the father in heaven. It's very clear. But when Thomas says, oh my God, it's an exclamation. That he's praying to God, not to Jesus. When anyone can understand, so if that was the case, why did you object to that man, good master? Yes, I am God. Do you mean to say Jesus is contradicting? To one man he says God, one man he doesn't say. Ah, your prophet is my prophet. I love Jesus. If you speak wrong about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I'll get angry. I don't believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, telling one person he's God and one is not God. You are trying to defame Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I get angry with that. Because I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I follow Jesus Christ more than you. Do you know that? If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. Brother, do you have alcohol? Do I drink alcohol? Yes. A little bit, yes. A little bit. You know, it's mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18. Do not be drunk with wine. Yes. It's mentioned in Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, that wine is a mocker. Right. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 18, if you break one law or title of the law, you shall not enter paradise. Correct? 
Right. Oh, you are, I don't have alcohol. But, I'm following more of Jesus than you. But, Jesus, Brother, but we have pork. Yes. A little bit. A lot of pork. It's mentioned yes. in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, you should have pork. I don't have pork, you have pork. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslim the more Christian than the Christian themselves. But are you circumcised? No. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the gospel of Luke, circumcised on the eighth day. So you are saying, no, no, and I'm following more of Jesus than you. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslim the more Christian than the Christian themselves. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also said, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that year shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Here, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? No, sir, I don't. I believe. So I am more following the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, than you. Because I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You don't love him. You want to go against him. He's telling you, even if you break one jot or tittle, you shall not enter paradise. Do you want to go to paradise? Yes, I do. So why are you breaking the law of Jesus Christ? So that's what I'm telling you. Forget what is different in Quran and the Bible. At least let us follow what is common. The Bible says don't have pork. Quran says don't have. Don't have pork. Bible says not to have alcohol. Quran says not to have alcohol. Don't have alcohol. Bible says you get a circumcised. Our hadith says circumcision. So let us at least agree what is common. You are talking about scripture. You are talking about Bible. So why aren't you following? You point out one verse in the Quran which I don't follow and I will start following. One verse. One verse you take out. Chapter number so and so. Verse number so and so. I believe I followed the Quran. Then maybe I have, I may be doing something wrong. You point out one verse, Dr. Zakir. Quran says in chapter number so and so, verse number so and so. If you are doing it, stop. I will stop it. If you are not doing it, do it. I will do it. Because I believe Quran is the word of God. I implement on it. You are not following so much of the Bible. You don't believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't believe that there is one God. You want to have pork. You want to have alcohol. That means your love for Jesus is not so much that you can give up alcoholism. You don't love Jesus so much, peace be upon that you cannot give up pork. What kind of love? You point out anything what my beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. I'm a nasaddaqna. I hear and I affirm and I believe. Well, because I, I love my Prophet. Well, actually, I, I do believe in one God. Um, just one God, eternally existing in three people. Three people. Uh, in, 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 in three separate persons. Talking let, about Trinity. Yeah, let, yes, let, let, me, let me read this wait, verse. Wait, 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 wait. Trinity. Yes, that's right. Show me anywhere in the Bible the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. That's right, the no Trinity. The word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. That's true. That's true. But it exists in the Quran. Do you know that? Yes, I know. You know it's, that? It's, it says in the Quran, do not say the word Trinity. Yeah, that would be better. Surah Nisa, chapter right. 4, verse 171. Don't say Trinity. This has stopped it better for you. Right. So follow it. So, but, the so, word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. But let, let, you see, let, me, let me read this to you. You said about, uh, I mean, this is the Old Testament, right? And this is where, this is where Christians get Trinity from, um, other places. But here's one. It's Isaiah chapter 9, and it's verse Brother, 6. We'll give you a chance. Okay. First, you know, we are yes, talking I'm sorry. about the past yeah, the half right, an hour. That's right. You have not yet proven a single unequivocal statement from the complete Bible where Jesus kept peace be upon him. Himself says that he's God, or why he worship me. I ready to accept that Jesus is not God but messenger of God. Could, I read, like could, I, read, could I read one verse to you? One verse? Just one? After that verse, will you accept that Jesus is not God? No. <laughs> you don't want to believe Jesus is not but, God. But, but, you don't want to follow him. What kind of a Christian are you? But, but look, let this verse... No, no, no. I want to know. You say Jesus is God. Yes. I'm saying he's not God. Right. Yet you don't want to follow his teaching. I want to follow his teaching. Right. So who loves Jesus more, you or me? Who's a follower of Jesus Christ? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Who's following Jesus Christ? Please be upon him more. Well, I believe he's God. I believe he taught he was God. So. Okay, so when he didn't say he's God, he said, don't call me good. And yet you believe in God. So someone believes but, I'm God, does it mean that he loves me? But sir, he is betraying me. But sir, that Hindu is calling me God. Yeah, but sir, Jesus said, there's no one good but God, right? But 
Father in heaven. Right. Not right. you. Okay. Father in heaven. So was Abraham good? At this context, there is only one good according to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Right. So good Jesus... master, ultimate good is only God. Right. So the, there's a big context to that verse. That it's a, it's a lot. There's a lot there. But this verse but in the I'm old... asking you the question: whether you believe him to be God or messenger, why don't you follow him? Well, I believe he's a prophet and God, both. But why don't you follow him? Well, I I'm, don't I'm, believe I'm he's trying to. Following you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to follow him. How? There. <laughs> That means you love pork more than Jesus? You love alcohol more than Jesus? No. You love pork more than Jesus? But the, the Bible... What kind of a Christian well, are you? About alcohol. Why don't you come on to my side then? I'm a better Christian than you. Well, maybe you are. That could be true, you know? Yes. So then I'll go to Jannah, you will not go. And I love you, brother. Well, I but, love you and I want you to come with me well, to heaven. Well, well, sir, let me ask you a question. Um, how, how do you know? How do you know you'll go to heaven? How do you know? Because if I follow the scriptures... If I follow the word of God, I'll go to heaven. If are I you, don't follow... If you die today, sir, God forbid, but if you die today, will you go to heaven right inshallah, now? Inshallah. Inshallah. You don't know. You don't inshallah. know. Inshallah. You don't know. I know. If I die today, I know I'll go to heaven. I know. I know I'll go. Why? Why? Because I, I, I know I'll go to heaven because all my sin was taken by Jesus on the cross. So I can say to God, God, your son took all my punishment and I can God be sure... God doesn't have a son. Mm. You're belittling God by saying God has a son. But My God doesn't have a son. He doesn't beget. My God is superior. He doesn't require a son. And your God and my God is the same. You're belittling God. But and why should God kill his son for you and me? Because, Foolish. He, because he loves you. He loves you. Imagine there is the owner of a company and he tells the employee, okay, now I'm killing my son for all the employees. You believe I killed my son for you? And you go to heaven. Foolish. Have you seen any owner saying that? God is not foolish. Are you making God a fool? No, but... Are you foolish? Foolish that he is slaughtering his son and telling you believe that my son died. And why should God slaughter his son? First of all, God doesn't have a son. And why should he slaughter his son? Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 40, God is never unjust in the least degree. Such an unjust God, he's slaughtering his innocent son. Well, sir, do you believe God is angry with sin? God? I'm telling you, God is not unjust. Don't go to second question. No, no, angry, angry. Wait, wait, wait. First, you don't keep on jumping to second and third question, brother. We'll keep on running for the full nine. What's the use? You have not yet proved that Jesus is God. And you told me if you cannot prove, you will believe he's not God. Can I read the first Old Testament then? This will prove Jesus is God. If I can read this one verse. And if it doesn't prove, will you believe Jesus is not God? Well, if if it doesn't prove, okay. Okay, if If it doesn't prove. believe. Yes, it, if you are doing blind yes, belief, why are you okay, wasting my okay, time? Okay, like it, someone says 2 plus 2 is 5. Okay, if it doesn't... You prove to me anything, yes, I will yet believe 2 plus 2 is 5. Then why yes, should I waste my time? Okay, there are other people asking questions yeah, and waiting, okay, brother. This, this, I've been so kind to you. Haven't I been yes, kind to you? Let, let one verse, one verse, just one verse. And if it doesn't prove Jesus is God, then I won't, be, I won't believe he's God. Okay. Okay. So it's Isaiah chapter 6, uh, chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, and it's verse 6, right? It says this. Okay, this is Isaiah, the the prophet. But it's the prophet Isaiah. He says, For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This child, this son will be called Mighty God, Isaiah is saying. Where does it say that is Jesus? Where does it say? The son that was born. Time, I told you unequivocal statement from the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be of himself, says. No, that is not Jesus' word. Isaiah is not Jesus' word. You don't even know your Bible well. Isaiah cannot be the words of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He's a prophet, though. But is it the word of Jesus? It's the word of God. And Isaiah is saying a the son will be Bible, born. The whole Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, hardly spoke a few pages. There's something like red letter Bible. Do you know of that? Yeah. Red letter Bible. The red letter, if you put it, won't even hardly one or two pages of the newspaper. Correct? I want you to quote from there because that is the word of Jesus. Didn't I tell you I believe in Injile Isa? I don't believe in Injile Isaiah. I believe in Injile Jesus. So now we have again failed. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Um. I pray to God to give you guidance.
and remove the blind faith that you have. I pray to God the same for you. Yes, pray to God, the real God, not in, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Not Jesus. Jesus is a mean. He never said he's God. So you're praying to the false God. Don't pray to false God for me. Pray to the true God. Correct? And let's yes. come to common terms. You're not following the word of God. You're not leaving your pork. You're not leaving your alcohol. You're not being circumcised. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said he's not God. Yet you believe he's God. So many things are going against the God and you don't pray to God. If you go against God, will God listen to you? No. So therefore at least I hope God will listen to me. And I pray that he gives you guidance. So that you believe in the true God. And you come to the true part, brother. I thought that you are a professor of English. And you would keep your word. I am sorry. You could not prove Jesus is God. And you could not keep your word also. But I pray that may Allah give you courage. May Almighty God give you courage to accept the truth. Thank you. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Welcome back friends. I hope you enjoy the video till the last minute. As usual, I told you in so many videos that the era of debate was start when the Holy Quran, when the Quran was revealed on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before the Quran, what the people to do? The people of Arab, they were very famous in Arabic literature. So they make a poetry and then they stand it into the Kaaba. And then they wait for the next step that who one will be wrote better poetry than this in Arabic literature. So in this way they were doing a debate like indirect debate. But when the Holy Quran was revealed so the era of debate was finished and a new era has been started. So, so someone wrote the Surah Al-Kawthar Inna A'atwina Kal Kawthar Faswalli Al Rabbika Wanhar Someone wrote this words, this surah on a page and just hang it on the wall of Kaaba. So most of the people that though were so experienced people in Arabic literature but still they can't able to do to give a feedback on this. That's why Almighty Allah says that لا يأتو بمثله ولو كان بعضهم لبعض ظهيرا that if you were make friends of one another and do help each other, you will never bring such kind of Holy Quran which Almighty Allah has revealed. So the era of debate has been start when the Holy Quran was revealed. And Almighty Allah clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal al hasana. That you should uh, talk to the people and also talk to the people to come to uh, deen of Almighty Allah, come to the Islam with the beautiful message, with a very polite message. Like you should not do arguments with them like and, and angry words, accept the Islam like that. No, you have to use very beautiful words and a polite words. Now, if you look at this debate between the Dr. Zak and Nike and a Christian, so it was a very beautiful debate because these two have used no bad language. There is no we can say there is no bad, no bad language, there is no bad body language, there is nothing abusing like it and it was you know just like uh, exchange of words, Dr. Zakir Naif gave him his own proofs and this person uh, gave his own proofs and after that uh, the debate was finished. So the most beautiful part of the debate is that there was no bad use of words. Now. I look at the Christian face and look at the Christian personality. Most of the Christian they believe that Jesus claimed divinity and also Jesus claimed trinity. But actually that uh, uh, it was nothing but just a beautiful lie because most of the Christian they believe that Bible is the word of God. But in reality Bible is not the word of God because Almighty Allah revealed old books like uh, Torah, the Bur, Injil, like the Old Testament. But people of the, the scholar, the Islamic scholars of Christian, the Christian scholar, the Jew scholar, they make changes with time to time and hence a time come that the complete book was changed according to people it was written by human being. So you cannot believe that Bible is the verses of God if you really realize that on the which book has contained 100% authentic word of God that that is the only Holy Quran. You have to submit that Holy Quran is the final revelation of Almighty Allah. Now here the Jesus, the Christian asked the question that is Jesus really crucified? So the answer is that no, Jesus is not crucified because 
in the Holy Quran, Almighty Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا سَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ And another question asked by the, this Christian that is Jesus is not crucified, so where is Jesus now? So the answer is that Almighty Allah clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran, بَرَّفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ That Almighty Allah take away the Jesus to the sky alive. So my dear brother and sister, Christianity itself a big religion, but the reality is that it was not the facts, it was just like theoretical things. Like they believe that Jesus claimed divinity and Jesus claimed trinity, but the Holy Quran discuss about that, that uh, before the doomsday, before the Qiyamah, Jesus will return and he will be testify the Christian that I never told you that I claim divinity or I claim trinity. I never told you that worship me or worship my mom. And Almighty Allah will ask the same question from the Jesus on the day of Qiyamah that is call Allahu Ya Isa. و إذ قال الله يا عيسى ابن مريم أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله قالوا سبحانك Almighty Allah will ask the question from Jesus on the day of Qiyamah that you told the people that you should worship me and my mom except Almighty Allah so he will reply that no I never told them they just use my uh, miracle single handedly and they use it in a negative way that's why they worship me so Jesus never told to the people and also Dr. Zakir Naik give open challenge to these Christian people that if you find a single statement in the complete Bible where Jesus himself said that I am God or I am the son of God worship me so I will leave the Islam and I will be accept the Christianity. So my dear brother and sister Christianity is all about theoretical it was all about the false news you will never find a single statement in a complete Christianity where you say that yes this is right no not nothing if you simply match the two or three Bibles from different part of the world you will be confused that no there will be no matchable everyone will be different from one another so that's why I have told you that Quran is the final revelation and final testament from Almighty Allah return to Allah until a time will come that you return to Almighty Allah so my this debate it has a very great test because uh, Dr. Zakir and I give his own feedback while the Christian was asking questions and he was giving his own feedback. So these feedbacks they set fire on the stage. So that's why I love debate, especially those debate which are hassle free, which are whistle free and which are abuse free just like that that's why almighty allah says udu ila sabil rabbika bil hikmati wal muizzat al hasana and except that i have watched some of the debates where they exchange of words heated of words and like they were abusing each other and you know making body aggression so it was just a waste of time now this debate this is a kind of debate like we have to do if you have a debate with any other religion like christian Jewism, Hinduism, Buddhism, you have to use very beautiful words and suitable words until you compete or he compete you. I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the video, subscribe the channel and share it with your friends.